It's Halloween down at Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery in Chelsea, New York, and let's hope the spirits of baseball are with the Mets tonight because this is game five. They're in Los Angeles. They're playing the Dodgers, and it is do or die tonight. So as Tim McGraw would say, you gotta believe. So once again, we're down here in Chelsea. This is Halloween. We're gonna take a walk around and look at all this lovely artwork. And also as Yogi Berra would say, it's not over till it's over. So go Mets. May the spirits of baseball be upon us. It's Halloween here at Amsterdam Whitney Gallery in Chelsea, New York. With us is the owner, Ruthie Tucker. Ruthie, tell us a little bit about what we can see or expect tonight. Thank you, Crystal, and thank you so much for coming to Chelsea, the International Art Center of the World, and introducing your wonderful viewers to Amsterdam Whitney Gallery, which features more art stars than there are in heaven. Amsterdam Whitney Gallery features etchings, drawings, sculpture, landscape, we feature figurative, we have animals, we have surrealism, we have abstract art, we have the best and the most diversified art that one can see in Chelsea. And we're honored and we thank you again, Crystal, for showcasing Amsterdam Whitney Gallery's artists on your wonderful and very popular TV show. And once again, Happy Halloween, everyone. So now we're going to take a walk around and see the spirits in the room. <laughs> That's wonderful. And happy autumn to everyone because we're featuring outstanding art. Because in Chelsea, these are the future artists who will be in the museums in the 21st century. So come and visit us. We'd love to see you. Thank you again, Crystal. With us is Don Diego. What? Hello, Vega. <laughs> the alter ego of Zorro. No one figured out that Don Diego really was Zorro, except I'm pretty old, so I'm the retired Don Diego de la Vega. I love this costume. Me, I'm the spirit of the Mets here in uh, <laughs> New York City. Metsville. Metsville. And this is John Peters actually from uh, Michigan. Yes, uh, Detroit, Michigan. Painting in uh, Michigan for about uh, 40 years and showing here in New York. And tell us a little bit about this show tonight. Uh, this is a show of paintings I've done in the last year and a half. Uh, most of the paintings are either florals or landscapes in my typically bright primary colors. The gallery refers to me as a magical realist. A magical realist on this magical night down here in Chelsea. And what we have, if you want to look at the paintings, uh, we have, uh, I call them anthropomorphic sunflowers. They're sort of like human eyes looking at you. Beside that is uh, Mount Chikorua in New Hampshire in the fall with Lake Chikorua. Off my left shoulder is something called Hall of the Gods. It's in the Canadian Rockies. And behind me is the, the main coast. It's a golf, co golf course on the main coast. I love golf courses. I'm not a golfer, but I think they're beautiful landscapes. And you know, wait, just talking about golf courses, I was in Ireland and some amazing golf courses with some, castles. Some of the most beautiful landscaping, water features, trees are on golf courses. We also have uh, to the uh, right uh, the main coast. It's uh, north of uh, York, Maine, and down from that we have a walk in the woods with uh, Bailey, my friend's dog, and it's another fall scene. And beyond that we have Bell Rock in Sedona, Arizona, and beyond that we have a floral bouquet made up totally from my mind. <laughs> and your mind's colorful? Uh, yes, it's colorful. Cheerful? I hope it's cheerful. And tell me, what else are you working on? I'm working on a book of circus paintings I did uh, 25 years ago. I did 50 paintings. And the first time I showed those was in September of 2001. 
on Long Island and the artist reception was supposed to be on September 12th, 2001. And we all know what happened on September 11th, 2001. So here I am uh, with the circus show the day after the Twin Towers went down. A number of people wrote in the book, the gallery guide, this is a good counterpoint to the tragedy we've been through. So the circus helped some people forget that tragedy for a few minutes. That was a tragedy. As a matter of fact, the Crystal Heart Show was supposed to go up right about that same time also. So we delayed it for a couple months. I'm happy to be in New York. I hope New York enjoys my paintings. I will make more and I will send them to New York. I love New York and I hope you love my paintings. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you. John Peters from Detroit, Michigan. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Halloween at Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery brings us Sally Ruddy from California. And as I said, I'm a Mets fan and we're in California right now praying to stay alive. <laughs> oh, Mets. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> when in Rome. <laughs> when in Rome. <laughs> Sally, now, now tell me about this series here that you, that you have at Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery. Well, you know, the last time I spoke with you, you asked me, what am I going to do next and I really never usually tell anybody because I don't like to jinx myself but you can get anything out of anybody so I went ahead and said I'm going to do objects of beauty but I hadn't done any yet <laughs> so I went home and I spent the year thinking about what are objects in nature that just stop my heart that just speak to me and this is the result of those efforts. Well, behind me, I see a peacock. A peacock, and that piece is called numinous, which means magical and mystical. And I think the peacock is royalty of birds. They're just so gorgeous. So I actually started with a smaller piece. And while I was working on it, I kept thinking, oh, if only I had a peacock to pose for me. My husband and I visited some gardens in San Francisco um, called Philoles. It's south of San Francisco in Woodside. And as we walked out of the visitor center, this gorgeous peacock, about almost to my waist, strutted in front of me and stretched out his feathers and twirled back and forth like he was wearing a ball gown. And it was just absolutely magical. We thought we'd see him again. We never saw another peacock that day. But this piece is the result of my visit with that bird. He was performing for you. Yes, it was just so wonderful. <laughs> and you know, the, the male species, of course, is the one that's more colorful. But to me, it reminds me of a woman's dress. I mean, it's just so elegant and beautiful. And this piece, as I worked on it, I thought about chiffon fabric, so I did the background in a pale pink like chiffon, and then the colors I pulled through thinking almost like it was embroidery, and it feels very much like a tapestry to me when I look at it. So that, and I ended up calling it numinous because that bird was so magical. And then as we move on, is that an onion? Those are onions. I, um, I love the shimmery, translucent skin of an onion. It's almost iridescent. So um, that was how that one came to be. And this was my other peacock. And then I have rising moon, which this year we had a super moon. We did. We yeah. did. And it was quite large and beautiful. So I captured that moon just as it was rising close to the horizon and um, just putting that silvery light on the trees. And that's palm trees. Yes, yes, California yeah, palm California. trees. And the last piece is a magnolia and I called that magnolicious because it was this delicious magnolia blossom hanging on a tree as I walked out of a restaurant and I fell in love with it, looked at it, and went home and painted it. And I used a little bit of gold metallic powdered pigment 
and just blew it in there and worked it in to make it look a little like pollen and also to give it some shimmer. So that's how that came to be. Well, wonderful work. And I think that I received a postcard through the mail that maybe you're going to be exhibiting also. In France. In I was France, in... I thought so. International, Yay! international. Oh, <laughs> congratulations. Well, thank you. That's in November. So busy season. A busy season. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I don't want to jinx you, but do you know what's next? <laughs> <laughs> well, this year I'm safe because I have a little start on it. But I was asked by a California gallerist if I would do some small works, like 5x5 five five and 4x6, which is unusual for me. And they're going to have a miniature show, so that's what I've been working on right now. And it's been a fun challenge. Um, because they're small, I have to really edit things down, do some cropping, um, it's just been different, but fun, a lot of fun. Hmm. Well, once again, Sally Ruddy, it's been great to see you. We're here at Amsterdam Whitney Art Gallery from California, and we got, we got her to say, go Mets. Go Maybe Mets. The, the spirits <laughs> of baseball are in the room with us. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Sally. Thank you. Good to, Good see, to see you. you. With us, Lucy Matos from Buenos Aires. Hi. Hi. So glad to, to meet you tonight. Um, Lucy doesn't speak uh, English, so I will translate her a bit. <laughs> Lucy, wave, give them a wave. Lucy here is, is uh, all dressed up for Halloween. Yes. Oh, Lucy, <laughs> yes. She's uh, the owner of a huge museum in Argentina, Lucy Matos Museum, so you can visit lucymatos.com in case you want to see more of her work. And we are so honored and proud to be here at the Amsterdam Whitney tonight. And, and, and tell me, now she brought this sculpture, she's brought a few sculptures. Could you tell us a little bit about the design? Yes, well these are designed, this is a dancer, it's called the Dream. And it's of bronze uh, and it's beautiful, it's taken like more than one year to, to produce it. It's like, it takes a really a lot of time. So we are very honored to, to It's be marble? Marble. Yes, it's marble, and this is bronze, and the technique of the color, Lucy, is, is her, like a patina uh, with, a, uh, with a different color. And is she, is she doing an eternal pirouette? Yes, it's a pirouette. That, that's exactly like that, and yeah, you, when you move it, you can see her dancing. <laughs> So we are very, very honored and proud to be here, enjoying others, you know, artists in New York from different parts of the world. Now tell us about this second sculpture. Oh, this we have an interpreter here. Yes, I'm like the interpreter and her guardian, the angel guardian of her. Well, this is called In a Whisper. It's also bronze. Uh, this, this color is with uh, a lot of acids a special acid that came out this color they are they used to come out this color and also it takes m for six months to a year to make it the whole uh, model of, of the sculpture it, it must be difficult working with acid it's very very difficult because you, when you have more you have another color when you have less you haven't got the color and it's very like um, you have to be very detailist, you know, and so it's, it's a, a really, really difficult work to work with acid. Could it also burn you or...? Si te puede quemar el ácido, si te puede quemar o te puede dañar. Si, of course, si te puede dañar. Si, si, si. So you have to be, like, very careful. It takes a lot of work. Well, this piece is called Tu me quieres blanca, you want me white in English. It's difficult to translate because it's like um, a sentiment, a sentiment in the in the in the world of the name, and this is res polyester resin with different colors, uh, like acrylics. So um, also it's like a series of a huge one. She does it like in four meters high, and this is one of the petite ones that the gallery uh, asked us to join here in Argentina. So we are very glad to, to show the Tu Me Quieres Blanca in uh, New York. In New York. And it is special because it's Lucy's birthday month. Happy birthday! 
Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. The best way of the, of um, celebrating is you know exhibiting their their masterpieces. <laughs> For our final sculpture, but a little bit about nature. Yes, this is like also difficult to translate the name because all the names are from the heart. So it's like up to when are we still going to wait for the human beings to conserve and to be conscious about, about nature, about ecological problems. So it's like a man asking God up to when are we are still in not believing in that we have, we have to take care of our environment. So if, if you can see, the figure says all. When, when you see the figure, you understand the name. With this Aida Valencio from Mexico, tell me your sculptures, are these sculptures? Or? Yes, I did a series of sculptures called the, uh, the Object, the Concept and the Journey for this uh, special occasion at w Amsterdam Whitney Gallery. Now, right behind us, tell, tell me about uh, this sculpture. This piece is called the River of Hope. Yeah. And the object that uh, the uh, donor gave me are those little uh, clay bases that are in the river. And she, uh, when she uh, throws them in the river, she is wishing for a house. She is wishing for a family. And she is wishing somebody cares for her. So this piece is called the River of Hope. So this is the dream creator. And the object that the uh, donor gave me is a meat grinder. So the meat grinder, I'm a mosaic artist and a sculptor. So with my pieces, I am grinding my ideas and creating a piece. So that's why it's called the dream creator. This is called the Chains of Life. The object of, uh, in this piece, is a necklace. And when she gave it to me, she told me that this is the, uh, the union between uh, friends and family and the life that goes all around uniting the world. So everything here is natural stone. Lapis lazuli, amber, uh, uh, urkin, uh, amatista, a special uh, emerald so everything uh, works in a different energy so that's why it's called the energy the chains of life because life is an energy the, um, the object in this piece is the kitchen burner and the kitchen burner for the donor represents um, uh, the family the unity and the kitchen where everybody unites and has a of a family time. So this piece is called Protection and Unity. Okay? And all the pieces are made with natural stone, glass, and metal. This piece is called a genie in a bottle. And the object is a Greek small uh, ceramic piece that when uh, the donor gave it to me, he told me that that represented uh, a fetish amulet for him, uh, un amuleto as in Spanish. So coming out of uh, the uh, piece is all the, the dreams that all of us have in, in, our, world, in our life. That's uh, my interpretation of the object. Uh, this piece is a uh, very special piece because uh, the object is a rosary, a um, very religious piece that um, my friend that gave it to me, uh, she uses it to pray for people who are um, dying. And uh, for me, it represented a very intricate piece because it gave me the uh, time to think about uh, how we have to go and where we do have to come. Okay, fans, it's nearing Halloween, and let's see if the spirits of baseball are back on the side of the Mets as they were in 1986 when Milky Wilson got up to the plate and Bill Buckner on first base, and he hits the ball, and oh no, it went right through my legs, and the Mets win. They score from third base. Well, fans, let's hope 
returns to that good luck as it did in 1986. All's forgiven from the Red Sox. We're rooting for the Mets. Let's go Mets! And how did this story end? Well, the spirits of baseball were with the Mets that evening as they were victorious over the Los Angeles Dodgers, claiming the 2015 National League Division Series. They went on to sweep the Chicago Cubs for the 2015 National League Championship before losing in five games to the Kansas City Royals in the 2015 World Series. Sorry about that, Mets. See you next year. We've been here at Amsterdam Whitney Gallery in Chelsea, New York. It's Halloween. We're with Ruthie Tucker. Say goodnight, Ruthie. Good night, Crystal. Good night, viewers and art lovers everywhere. Happy Halloween and happy autumnal season. And come to Chelsea for finding the most outstanding and exciting art in the universe. Thank you again, Crystal. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. And now let's go to Grand Central Station for the Oyster Frenzy. It's the 14th annual Grand Central Oyster Frenzy here at the iconic Oyster Bar in New York City. This is an all-day event featuring professional oyster shucking contest as well as competitive eating and we have leading chefs who will be showcasing their culinary talents. <laughs> With us, Noka, the winner of the beer shucking, Master Shucker. Tell us your secret. Ah, uh, no secret, just a speed, one, two, three, enjoy it, and here you go, para bim, boom. This is the fourth one in the row. I work in the behind the bar, oyster bar, and the floor I too. He <laughs> trained <laughs> So you open a lot of beer? Uh, probably, yes, I do. I do. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. There you go. Thank you. that has uh, pan fried oysters on top and the oysters have been coated in breadcrumbs with a little bit of hazelnut in it and then they're served with a vinaigrette, a red wine vinaigrette that has also some hazelnut oil in it and then a little sprinkle of chopped toasted hazelnuts goes on top as well. And that's from the fried chapter of my cookbook, Oysters. I made a fettuccine with a Blue Point oysters, mascarpone, roasted pumpkin and sage. I mean, it's a great accompaniment for the oysters. We don't really cook the oysters, so they're still a little medium rare, and it goes really good with the pumpkin. It adds a little richness to it. Very simple, you know? Straightforward. We put the pasta, and then we add a little bit of the water from the pasta, and we combine it with, the, we just combine everything. That's all we want to do. We combine the mascarpone, the oysters, the pumpkin, and that's it, and then we're done. About how long does it take to make? The whole thing takes about, the cooking takes about five minutes. Roasting the pumpkin, cutting that meat takes 20 minutes, 30 minutes. So it's a quick recipe. The recipe is uh, its one of my wife's favorites, is Portuguese grilled oysters. Cherise and onions, slightly, lightly uh, cooked. Then we add some melted garlic butter and cover it with some cheese. Put it under the, grill, under the broiler or outside grill, preferably, until the cheese starts to melt, the butter starts to bubble. Sub falls off into the flames, it goes gush gush, and it's absolutely delicious. Not very complicated. You don't want to make oysters complicated. You want to really serve your oysters naked or with a little bit of lime because you want to taste the oyster. As an oyster farmer, I'm passionate about that. But there's also nothing wrong with a good cooked oyster on occasion. So I grow oysters that start at about this size, right there and I get them in the spring, early summer. By the fall, they're hopefully this size, and then they overwinter, I start selling them the following year. This is what a bay scallop looks like, which I have permits for and do grow occasionally. These are baby bay scallops. I also grow hard shell clams. These are small ones from seed. 
I'm a farmer. I buy my, I, I grow from seed versus a wild harvester. These are some of my Watch Hill Jumbo Lumbos, which are very, very on a large size. We don't sell those. We just have a few for special occasions and displays. So what else would you like to know? Just tell, tell me about the different taste of oyster. Oh, there's a huge difference in taste. 95% uh, of the world's production is not what I grow, which is a uh, Crustacea virginica. It's mostly gigas. Uh, uh, virginica, particularly at Watch Hill, will have a very minerally, briny, taste of the ocean taste. A gigas, which, once again, I'm passionate, uh, will more, more or less taste like cucumber and have a little bit more of a, a, a soft-boiled egg texture. So I, I recommend getting Virginica. I, I don't want to say more than that or I'll get somebody mad at me. <laughs> It's very strong, but you know, I I make it too high, you know, maybe I don't know when. <laughs> you shucked a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my name is uh, Luis Iglesias. I'm from Mexico. And uh, usually work here in the uh, Grand Central Oyster Bar, but I have uh, one year ago, uh, I'm done here. And then give me, tell me a secret about oyster shucking. That's a secret. I don't tell nobody my secret. <laughs> Yeah. I'm Crystal Hart reporting from the iconic Oyster Bar here at Grand Central Station. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the show and come on down and have some oysters.